In this video, we will demonstrate how a problem related to marketing clothing may be modeled as a discrete time Markov chain with absorbing and transient states. The context for this problem is the company Catch Me Running, a small online retailer of women's running shirts. I'm Barbara Gary, and I am co-founder and part owner of Catch Me Running Company. We are a small running um, women's running wear company based in Evergreen, Colorado, and we have been in operation for a couple of years. We started a couple of years ago um, with our idea, and we got it at the Salt Lake City Marathon. We were there running the race, and we were at the expo and noticed some other t-shirt vendors there. And there was one lady in particular who was selling um, lots of women's shirts. And in looking at those, um, we felt like her design could have been more appealing. And, and we felt like that we had something better to offer. We felt like that women wanted something a little more simple. Um, they wanted something classy that made a statement. Um, and we felt like that was something that we um, wanted to provide for females to do. Um, that'd be a profitable thing for us to do and something that women would enjoy. And so we started our business from there. We um, began with um, hiring a graphic designer and he made a logo for us. We did some designs for some shirts. We got a bunch of shirts and um, hired a silk screener and got shirts printed and started from there. Um, we hit several different expos selling our shirts and we felt like response was positive. People enjoyed the shirt. They um, really responded well to our design. But the problem with that being is that we weren't selling enough quantity. The, um, it was this uh, kind of a hefty and a steep price that we paid for the entry fee. And with um, selling at the expo, we weren't selling enough to cover that fee. So we realized that a problem exists. We did also as well sell them off the internet and set up a website and people could come on the website and place orders as well and order them. When we would get an order, we would, um, from our house, you know, take the shirt, fulfill the order, put it in a box, take it to the post office and mail it out. So we were truly a home-based um, operation business. We continue to do this, um, but still looking for ways to increase our sales um, and to um, be able to sell more and reach more people with that. We feel like we have a fabulous product. We have something that um, women want. Women really, when they do a sport that they enjoy like running, women want to look good when they do something that they enjoy doing. And so we feel like we have a great design, we have a great product, we have what women want. Our challenge is just trying to figure out how the best way is to get it to the females um, and what strategy would work best for us to increase our sales and continue our product. That being said, in the future, we aren't limited just to shirts. We um, have thought about this and we have a great other marketing ideas. We want to expand into visors, socks, running skirts, um, a whole line of apparel, not just limited to shirts. So we have the vision of what we want to do. We are just at the point where we need to figure out how the best way is to do that. Suppose that Catch Me Running were considering the marketing campaigns of giving 10% and 20% off to its previous customers as a means to generate repeat business. Though the problem presented is representative of one in that industry, keep in mind that all data given in this video is fictitious and for illustrative purposes only. Assume that the company has tracked individuals visiting their site using their IP addresses, and it has been observed that the probability of purchasing on a visit is dependent upon how many shirts the customer purchased on their last visit. This data has yielded the following transition probabilities. If it has been a year since the customer last visited, it is assumed that they are a lost customer and absorbed, and the population of people buying three or more shirts is lumped together. As an example, if a customer visits the site and buys nothing, the probability they will never come back is 90%. The probability they will come back but buy nothing on their next visit is 8%. And the probability they will buy three or more shirts is 0.4%. If, on their last visit, they bought one shirt, however, the probability they will never return is 80%. The probability they will return and buy two shirts is 3%, and so forth. These probabilities were obtained from historical data, yet the impact of the proposed marketing campaigns on these probabilities is something that has been hypothesized or given. Suppose that a marketing firm who has worked with many companies in the past suggests to Catch Me Running that the effect of having 10% off will yield the following transition probabilities. Note that the probability of a person buying a shirt if they bought nothing last time hasn't changed. This is consistent as many of the customers are first-time visitors who don't have a coupon. In addition, the probability of a previous customer deciding to buy a shirt when they would have not otherwise isn't changed as only 10% off isn't assumed to be enough to convince customers to buy who already wouldn't have. 
The quantity of shirts that a customer buys who does come back, however, is increased. So while the 10% off campaign doesn't change people's mind about buying or not, it does encourage those who do come back to buy more. The 20% off campaign, however, will change some people's mind on whether to come back or not and influence them to buy more, yielding the following transition probability matrix. Note the influence on a person's decision to buy and on the number of shirts bought. Hence the transition probability matrices for doing nothing is for 10% off and for 20% off. The problem is to determine which marketing campaign, if any, will be the most profitable to catch me running. The problem of determining the profit of each marketing campaign can be found by finding the mean residence time of customers in the transient states prior to absorption and then multiplying this by profit generated by selling the shirts. Assume that all regular assumptions about a discrete time Markov chain have been satisfied through the use of statistical inference. In particular, the stochastic model is as follows. And the transition probability matrix may be partitioned as follows. Letting nij be equal to the random variable that denotes number of times customer transitions from transient state i to j. It follows then that mu ij is equal to the expected number of times j shirts were purchased when the customer purchased i shirts on their previous visit. And m is equal to the matrix of mean residence times mu ij's. The profit of each policy may then be found by multiplying the residence times by the corresponding per shirt profit.